This is a video introduction on how to use some free software using Mix and some free VST plugins on an ASIO system in order to be able to keep the variable speed on Mix the same pitch and also clean up the audio and filter it so it sounds better. Let me demonstrate initially what Mix sounds like without any help. We've prepared a file to send an mp3 file from a text file using ebook to CW using just the default settings with no additional parameters. Speed is at 60, the pitch tone is at 800 Hertz. And we are going to set this right about zero here and start playing so you see what it sounds like. Okay, so I varied the speed and I hit the A button to hit reverse to try to go back and listen to a word over and over again. And as you can hear, there's some harmonics and the pitch varies quite a bit. May not be the best way to train. We're at 60%, so it's going from 60 and 60% more, 60% less, so that you can slow this down and hit the A button. But if you want to keep it the same pitch and clean up the audio, this is how we're going to give it a try. We're using the Jack Router system and there's a video that you need to watch to understand what I'm doing here. As far as if you want to set it up, you should be able to understand without that video. We're going to draw wires from Mix. We're going to go through four VST plugins. So DSP audio filters. This is going to regenerate whatever mix puts out as a CW element it's going to produce a MIDI note at that same amount of time and at a specific note so it's going to tell this synthesizer to put out a sine wave at a certain length say 10 milliseconds for a DA. Whatever it's measuring on the left it puts out on the right through a MIDI information this MIDI event and this is used in music and uh, MIDI keyboards so you may be familiar with that from if you're a musician. So this tells this synthesizer to play a note at 700 Hertz for a certain amount of time. So just like the CW you hear without it it's going to reproduce another CW note so this is acting like a code practice oscillator and Regate is actually becoming its keyer. So it sends its audio now Bipper does not have uh, any edged wave shaping. So it's just a, a zero rise, zero fall time. It's just a square envelope as far as that goes producing a sine wave. So we need to clean that up. So we're going to send that output into this equalizer as a first. And it's going to look like this. So we have a little peak and then we're taking away and as a notch filter we're taking the before and after frequencies and we're peaking it just a little bit lowering down the gain according to how much we peak it. That helps to clean it up before we send it to this filter, this engineer's filter. And there's quite a few settings on here. This is how I particularly like my settings. You have a bunch of options here so you have to put, you know, find out what pitch you want and what kind of filtering uh, seems to be best for you. So it's a lot of variability on how to adjust it till you get it just the way you want it to sound. So let's see what this sounds like through mix with all these filters. Okay, so we varied the pitch and we backed it up and we didn't get that super high frequency. There's a little bit of noise, but at least it's not a high pitched one when you're trying to back it up. But it really cleaned up the audio. 
And what I'd like to do now is go ahead and keep the file plane and then take these filters out of sequence and kind of demonstrate these plugins. And at the end of this engineer's filter, we're sending it to the sound card, which is called System. Also sending it to another plugin that tells us what pitch, which is close to 700 hertz. And we have a frequency spectrum analyzer here that we can also draw lines to. So there's a lot of things you can do with this ASIO connection bay and using the jack routers way of uh, listening to audio on your computer. And this is just using the computer's own sound card. So I'm not using a true ASIO sound card. We're using ASIO for all and I'm using the Realtek HD audio output and this is wrapping and doing its magic and turning this into an ASIO sound card so I can use jack router and we're at 256 samples and it's very good latency. Alright, I'm going to play this and we're going to go through these filters, turn them on, turn them off so you can hear what it sounds like without them. Just coming out of Bipper. Okay, and taking the filters in and out, you should have heard some noise. So let's also show you the regate, how to set that. And this is the magic right here. It's taking audio input from mix. It's going straight into the input of regate, which is uh, acting as a gate. And at this certain threshold level, you set it so that it just keys just the way you want it to. If you set it a little bit heavy, you can get heavy keying, a little bit just on the edge of getting just a little bit of lightness out of it. And these are the settings that seem to work best for my preferences. The secret down here is instead of sending audio out, as you see here, there are no audio output connections, just an events out, which is a MIDI out. That is an information only channel that's telling this synthesizer bipper what note to play and for how long to play it. And in some synthesizers it has other information but all we're concerned about is on and off and that's what this does when you check mark this down here on regate you get send MIDI on note 77 and that is pretty close to 700 Hertz if you don't like 700 whatever it is if you like to hear the same pitch uh, the, the CW at the same pitch just plug whatever that is and you can go 76 78 and it's just notes on the piano just one at a time in a chromatic scale. So you have F, F sharp, G, G sharp, according to these numbers here. So just figure out what note that is and plug that in here and keep a check mark and you'll get the same event. Now I'm going to adjust, turn it back on, and I'm going to try to adjust this threshold and show you what happens if you don't get this set right. Okay, as you saw there, it seems like just pretty close to the top, right where the green stops, just a little bit below that with this mark right there. Sometimes you can set the, set the hysteresis just a little bit, but for a solid tone, usually you don't have to worry about that. This pre-open is pretty important. You might be able to use one or two, so just mess around with that a little bit. I didn't have to do anything but this, and it worked, worked just fine for using mix. Alright, let's show you what the spectrum looks like and then we'll be done with this. 
So if you're interested in seeing the uh, spectrum analyzer, hang in there just a little bit and we'll do this again with and without the filters. Get started first. Okay, and that basically sums up how to uh, use this mix for when you're playing an audio file, training with a QRQ file that you want to listen to over and over again. You have the ability to hit the letter A and back it up, go over and over a word. You can slow that word down if you don't get it after a few times. Slow it down some more until you do get it, then creep it back up to where you were, the speed you were going at. Once you're able to go through the whole file, increase the speed a little bit more, play the file again. If you miss a word, hit A. Keep going over that word, slow down again if you need to, but you'll find that after you do that a few times, you only have to repeat once or twice to get the word instead of you know five or six times. And you'll know also notice that you just have to repeat it a couple times and you won't have to slow it down to get it. So you'll be able to train your brain to listen to that whole word sound. And as you get faster and faster, this will keep at the same pitch, your preferred pitch, and with those two filters. M equalizer and the engineer's filter, however you want to set it, you'll have very high performance in your QRQ CW training. Thanks for watching.